What's going on guys? Coach Chris Specht here from Amazon Selling Hustle. In this video, we are going to talk about product research benchmarks. So we are on module three and we are now at the point where we want to start doing product research. So now we need a clear idea of what we want to do product research wise. What is the goal of product research? So the goal of product research is to find a product you can rank on page one with that product for multiple keywords. The example I always use is exercise ball. Um, an exercise ball, a lot of people will call it a stability ball. You want to rank on page one for all the different broadest keywords uh, possible uh, for the product that you're going to launch. So for an exercise ball, stability ball, Swiss ball, a lot of people call it a sit-up ball, random versions of that keyword, you want to take it and come up with as many variations in the broadest aspect. And then what you want to do is when you launch your product, you want to be able to rise to page one because page one is where all of the sales are. So some products make it impossible because they're too competitive versus some products are relatively easy because the competition isn't there. So for example, with the example of stability ball, um, when you're going to launch a product like that, what do you want to consider? Well, there's a few things you want to look for in a product that you're going to launch. Um, first thing you want to look for is does it have sales? Is it making sales? Like, is there a demand? So sales is demand. Um, you want to find products that have a huge demand. Um, the second thing you want to look for is products that are not competitive. Uh, products, usually reviews or not usually like reviews are your competition. Um, generally sellers with a lot of reviews hit page one and stay on page one and it makes it impossible for new sellers to bring the same product and rank on page one when they don't have any reviews. So you want to look for products with low reviews and you want to look for products that have high sales. The next thing that you want to look at is profits. How much profit are you going to make from the product that you're launching? Um, a typical price range that I like to launch in is products under $50 price point because I think after $50, a lot of people second guess their purchases, have to go check with um, their spouse or somebody. Uh, it's not an impulse buy. So I prefer products that are under $50 at that price point, but I also prefer products that are over the $20 price point. Personally, I like to sell products that are between $25 and $50 because I find that that gives me a price point and a profit that I want to, um, that I feel good about. Um, usually I can earn about $10 a sale with products in that price point. So I like to hover in that range when I'm doing product research. Now, when I first started, I had my lower limits kind of set lower to start because I wanted to see a wider variety of products. Um, products that were maybe from the 18 or $17. Sometimes I would even go down to $15 and look at those products and see what was available. And sometimes I would just bump it up to $20, kind of between 20 and 50. And sometimes I would kick up the upper echelon to 55, but I never really went past 55 and I still don't to this day. I try to stick in that price range. Uh, because my goal when I first started selling on Amazon was to make an extra hundred dollars a day and I figured if I broke that down to a per product, I would look at products if I, you know, and, and I, and I was, it was explained to me, like, if you can find products that you can make an extra $10 every time you sell it and you can sell 10 a day, then you'll hit your hundred dollar target. So that's kind of what I set myself up with as far as when I do my product research, um, products that make me 10 bucks a day, I can sell 10 of them that do so that if I can sell 10 a day over the course of of 30 days I want to be able to sell 300 so my benchmark was 300 uh, units per month in sales that was my goal that's my benchmark for sales um, so sales are what you want to make profits what you kind of want to look at when you're selling products because you obviously want to make a profit um, if you're selling products that are under $15 you know and below 
your profits are going to diminish. You're going to look at products that are probably um, peaking at around $5 profit. So the problem with that is now you have to sell a lot more. And not that it, it's not available. There are a lot of products that um, make $5 profit, but that sell upwards of a thousand uh, units a month. So you'll still reach your goals with a thousand units of sales. I'm sure everyone would love to have a thousand units of sales per month on a product. Um, I also want to look at um, if the product is patented. Um, patent, you never want to launch a product that is patented um, because the person who owns the patent will reach out and they will ask you to stop immediately take your listing off of Amazon or they will sue you. Uh, so trust me, you don't want to do it. Just throw your hands in the air, say my my fault. I did not realize it. Uh, but you want to check Google patents for uh, your product and check on there to see if the product is patented uh, or not. Um, from there, you want to make sure you want to check if it's seasonal. You'll know if the product is seasonal. Obviously, if you're launching in like the patio area or the the gardening area you may fall in a seasonal category for some areas of the country uh, for other areas of the country might be all year round um, if you're in the barbecue same thing you might be seasonal if you're launching Christmas lights um, obviously you're really seasonal um, people aren't buying Christmas lights in the summer right so you want to look at that product you ultimately want a product that sells all year round um, so when you're targeting products, look for products that have a full year's life cycle or as close to it as possible. Um, the next thing you'll want to look at is what are the weight and dimensions of the product. Uh, when I first started selling on Amazon and to this day, I look for products that are small in dimension uh, and lightweight. The lighter weight, the better because the cost of shipping the product from China is really expensive when the products start to get heavier uh, but with lightweight products a lot can be fit into one box um, you can like my first product order i was able to fit um, 120 units into one box so almost 500 units in four boxes and ship four 500 units to uh to myself for $385, so less than a dollar per unit in shipping from China all the way to Canada. So lightweight, compact product uh, is ideal. Um, doesn't mean that in the future you won't start looking at larger products, but um, let's start wrapping up your business right now. Uh, and so look at lightweight products, sort by the weight, uh, start looking through the lighter weight products first uh, and you'll get a great kind of list. You'll generate a great list of products that will, um, you know, that you'll be able to look further into to see if the demand and the criteria match it. Um, the next thing I look at is I'll look at the listing, uh, the different listings. So when I find a product and I'm looking at multiple keywords, I'll look at like the top 10 to 15 listings um, on page one and I'll study their listing. I'll look at their bullet points, their title, their photos, um, their description. I'll look at all the details and see how well their listings are done. If I can find um, four or five or even more, six or seven listings that aren't done all that well, then I'll get excited because I'll know I'll have an easier time uh, selling to those customers who are looking if my listing is created um, with you know a lot of precision and I put a lot of effort into my title and pictures and I put a lot of effort into my bullet points um, if I put the more effort I put into building that stuff and making a quality listing the better off I am against my competition um, I also will gauge when I'm doing research um, about listings, I want to make sure that uh, I look at the reviews that each listing have because reviews, again, are competition. Uh, 
a person doesn't have to have a great listing if they have a lot of reviews because those reviews at the end of the day the way I look at it is for every review a person has that review is like having a salesperson especially if it's a positive five-star review it's like a salesperson telling you the benefits and features and advantages of the product and convincing you why they bought it uh, and that's the only way that people kind of get the a good sense of buying the product on Amazon anyway is they read the reviews so the more reviews a person has the more difficult time I'm gonna have competing with that person so in the next video we'll kinda of go more detail into exactly how uh, we'll look at Amazon uh, products and we will filter through all the criteria I will see you guys in the next video